Good morning and welcome to the historic Orpheum Theater for the 2019 Phoenix Mayoral Inauguration Ceremony. Now please welcome to the stage, Interim Mayor Thelda Williams, Vice Mayor Jim Waring, Councilwoman Deborah Stark, Councilwoman Laura Pastor, Councilwoman Vanya Guevara, Councilman Sal DeSisio, Councilman Michael Nowakowski, Councilwoman Felicita Mendoza, and Mayor-elect Kate Gallego. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Mariachi Rubor. Ladies and gentlemen, how about one more round of applause for Mariachi Rubor. And now for our opening comments, please welcome 
Interim Mayor Thelda Williams. Good morning, everyone. I am so delighted to see so many people here visiting our historic Orpheum Theater. Uh, we have some very special guests I'd like to recognize. Uh, we have Congressman Ruben Gallego. <laughs> Congressman Greg Stanton. We have state officials, Secretary of State Katie Hobbs. <laughs> Superintendent of Education, Kathy Hoffman. <laughs> Corporation Commissioner, Sandra Kennedy. <laughs> Minority Leader, Charlene Fernandez. Assistant Minority Leader, Randy Fries. And co-minority whips, Reginald Boulding and Athena Salmon. We also have Maricopa County Supervisor, Bill Gates. Supervisor, Steve Gallardo. and Maricopa County Recorder, Adrian Fontes. Now, from this perspective, I can't see a face out there, so if there are any other elected or previously serving officials, please stand and be recognized. I will tell you, I love Phoenix. And Phoenix continues to prosper, to grow, to attract new businesses, investors, and residents. And this past year, 7,398 new jobs have been formed, 868,835,000 new capital investments have been made, and 2,320,000 uh, 1,000 square feet of new building has been built. It's pretty good. And our, yeah. <laughs> We're very proud of our biotech industry. And within the next 24 months, we're going to see 7,000 new jobs, 4.2 million of new square footage for research and patient care, and that includes a 77 million Wexford Science and Technology Center that we just broke ground on uh, for 200,000 square feet. And they're already telling us they're designing the second building that will be that size. We have $648 million of expansion on Mayo Clinic, uh, Banner, VA Memorial Clinic, and Health Care Innovate, which is one of the first public-private uh, buildings that we have made. And in downtown, our universities continue to grow and invest. ASU is building, NAU is expanding, U of A is expanding, Creighton is building a $100 million revamp of the old Chris Town, and it continues to build and gain on international reputation. And we have over 100, or 100, 10,000 people that live downtown. And it's the first time that's ever happened, and I'm very proud to say they have a new dog park. <laughs> and I want to give credit to the council, the city manager. We have a great city manager. We have outstanding employees. And we have a community that continues to support uh, all of our efforts and help us grow and prosper. The upcoming proposed 
budget is balanced for 1920. You're going to be hearing more about it uh, in the coming month. And we're not able to expand and restore. We're going to have additional library hours, new park rangers, public safety increases for police and fire, and support staff for them, because you can't just hire policemen if you don't have enough 911 operators. Uh, a crisis response counselor, uh, more technicians in the lab, and a central booking station, and improving our cybersecurity. You know, one of the things that I think our new mayor is going to learn, we've had so many complaints about streets, potholes, et cetera. And I, I can hear you agree. <laughs> uh, well, here's what's going to happen. You're really going to complain beginning probably in another month because $325 million worth of in water infrastructure is now going to be underway, and that's going to be tearing up our streets, but it will maintain our water, water quality and availability. You're going to have additional $200 million of street repairs, and then for Sky Harbor be working on Terminal 3 at the tune of $308 million. So we have a lot of things going, a lot of new jobs being created. I painted kind of a really rosy picture, but I will tell you we do have some great challenges. We need affordable housing. We have homeless and transit issues. We need city buildings repaired. And we need to continue um, to address our public safety, new fire stations, additional buildings. If you hire more people, you've got to have bigger buildings. And we have a couple ballot issues that are going to be real challenges. But fortunately for the city of Phoenix, you have elected a new mayor that is quite capable, can take on challenges, and I look forward to working with her. So thank you all for being here. And now, for this morning's invocation, please welcome to the stage, from Temple Solel, Rabbi John Linder. The source of all life, of all that is good and kind, loving and just, bestow your blessings upon Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego, her parents Jim and Julie, and of course her beautiful son Michael. Mayor Gallego, your road to the highest elected office in Phoenix, America's fifth largest city, has been paved with hard work, uncompromising ethics, imagination, collaboration, intelligence, humility, humor, and a vision for the common good. You recognize that you stand on the shoulders of mayors, elected officials, and civic leaders that have come before you. Their legacy is now in your capable hands. Mayor Gallego, your Phoenix will be a no-place-for-hate city. Under your leadership in partnership with law enforcement and first responders, there will continue to be no equivocation when anyone is threatened on the basis of religion, nationality, sexual identity, disabilities, or the color of their skin. On the contrary, <laughs> on the contrary, celebrating diversity will be the cornerstone of your administration, a key to the greater prosperity of Arizona's state capital a model city across the nation. Mayor Gallego, your Phoenix will be a city that honors the divine spark in every resident, from the unemployed to the mentally ill, to the homeless, to the undocumented. You will raise the bar to restore people's human dignity through a culture of compassion with the resources, services, and rights they deserve. Your metrics of success, along with cutting edge economic development, will measure how we treat the most vulnerable in our midst. Under your leadership, as you demonstrated as city councilwoman, 
May you continue to value and seek the input of all segments of our great city. And may all Phoenicians give you the time and cut you the slack to settle in to your new position as you prioritize and set about addressing the biggest issues that face our community. Kate, we know there is no role you cherish more than being mother to your spirited son, Michael. And in all due respect, Mayor, we are not going to hold our breath for the day when Michael requests vegetables for dinner. <laughs> yet, yet with every breath we take, we will follow your lead, stand with you, respectfully challenge you, lift you up when you are down, help you keep humble when you're on top of the world, and be your partner to realize your vision of a city that will be a wonderful home for all our children. Can I get an amen? amen. Thank you, Rabbi Linder. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please stand for the posting of the colors by the Phoenix Police and Fire Honor Guard. Following the posting of the colors, the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Anik Singh Suchdev. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for Phoenix's new mayor, Kate Gallego, to take her oath of office. Please welcome to the stage, Phoenix Municipal Court Chief Presiding Judge, 
B. Don Taylor III, who will administer today's mayoral oath of office, and Mayor Gallego's parents, Jim and Julie, and her son, Michael. Thank you. Seated. You may be seated. You'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Kate Gallego. I, Kate Gallego. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties of the office of mayor. Discharge the duties of the office of mayor. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium for her inaugural address, Mayor Kate Gallego. Thank you. Thank you, Phoenix. It is an honor to stand before you as the mayor of the city I love. For me, a kid growing up in Albuquerque, Phoenix was always a big city I looked up to. As a young softball player, I got to travel here to Phoenix to play tournaments in the most beautiful city fields. I loved the big open spaces, the impressive mountain parks, and vast desert preserves. Like this city does for so many visitors, it left an impression on me. So, 15 years ago, after I graduated college, Phoenix was where I wanted to go to start my next chapter. I accepted my first job and loaded up my car with everything I owned. And as I drove into the valley on the I-17, I was filled with a sense of optimism and hope about what was in store for my future. I know I'm not alone in that experience. So many people come here for the same reasons. Phoenix is a city where anyone can come and make a difference where everyone is welcome to start their next chapter. The fact that I am standing here today says a lot about Phoenix, our country's fifth largest city. If you look at the mayors who lead the 10 largest cities, I'm very different. First, I'm the shortest. <laughs> I am the youngest. I'm the only one who sold Girl Scout cookies to support her troop. <laughs> I wasn't born here, and I have a last name that I hear people pronounce about 30 different ways. <laughs> in another city, these facts would be remarkable. But in Phoenix, it's just how we do business. While Los Angeles and New York have never had a female mayor, Phoenix has. And while 37 isn't the typical age for an American mayor, Phoenix has had several mayors who were my age or younger. To me, this is reflective of Phoenix, of my home. Here, hard work matters more than your last name, your age, your gender, or where you went to school. We're an open city where the results you deliver is the most important metric. I see that in our business trendsetters, our faith leaders, and our educators. It's a story I love to tell people outside our city. The optimism I felt driving into Phoenix to start my career, I still feel it today. And I know it's shared by all of us. For the last 17 months, we heard from thousands of Phoenicians at their doors, 
schools, coffee shops, union halls, and at dozens and dozens of campaign debates. We shared stories about our kids, talked about water pipelines, crosswalks, and potholes. As many of you know, these are things I love to talk about. <laughs> and traded ideas about how to create good jobs. Each conversation was different, but there was a common thread through them all. Although we have our challenges right now, at this moment, there is something undeniably special happening in Phoenix. Because of the investments we've made, the job market is shifting. Wages are rising as knowledge-based sectors grow. We grew technology jobs nearly 50% in my five years on the city council. For the first time in a long time, we are reversing the trend of our best and brightest college graduates leaving the region for work. Graduates can get a good job in Phoenix. And because of a burgeoning music scene, fun nightlife, great restaurants, and urban homes, they can see themselves making a life here. Something similar is happening with our most highly trained construction workers. Plumbers, pipe fitters, and carpenters are now finding work in areas such as building advanced manufacturing facilities instead of being recruited to other states. Our progress is most visible in our downtown, a downtown that's been 30 years in the making. Mayor Terry Goddard's vision got it started. And when voters made the investment in light rail, it put us on track for ASU downtown and the transformation of our urban center. Now, students at the downtown campuses want to stay here. Innovation is happening in our own backyard. Under the leader of Congressman Greg Stanton and others, we created the Phoenix Biomedical Campus and the Mayo Corridor. If the human race conquers cancer, there's a good chance downtown's own T-Gen will have a role in it. <laughs> ASU's Thunderbird School of Management and the Sky Harbor Airport will help us grow as a global business hub. And President Michael Crow is rethinking how education happens, making higher education accessible to more of our residents. Yet, what makes this time feel special is not just what's happening now, it's what's next. The opportunity for our generation to define Phoenix, to do what previous generations did for great cities around the world. It's up to us to protect the future of light rail and build the transportation system of tomorrow. <laughs> It's up to us to recreate our signature urban park. It's up to us to assert our role in the fourth industrial revolution, shape the future of the knowledge-based economy, and send a message to entrepreneurs everywhere. If you have an idea, if you want to build something great, Phoenix is where you want to be. I'm optimistic that those of us who are here today can be part of building the spaces that will define Phoenix in the next hundred years. Phoenix exists because of the Salt River and the great leaders who work to secure our water supply. But I believe the Salt River is not done defining our valley. Two Arizona giants who we lost last year, Congressman Ed Pastor and Senator John McCain, reimagined the Rio Salado. I look forward... I look forward to working with the other communities along the river to fulfill that vision. I'm honored that leaders from tribal nations, Maricopa County, and so many cities along the river, Tempe, Mesa, and Buckeye, are here today. I'm looking forward to working with all of you on this legacy project. Our communities are ready to work together to bring new life to the riverfront. I'm also looking forward to working with our neighboring cities to modernize Maricopa's regional transportation plan. In America's fastest growing county, we must plan ahead. I'm ready to work with the business community to make it even easier to create good jobs. We can cut more government red tape and put a special focus on lifting homegrown small businesses that are the heart of our community. A strong economy requires a thriving arts community. And we have incredible arts. <laughs> We have incredible arts, culture, and historic preservation organizations in Phoenix. They've been growing and contributing in important ways. 
And if you've spent time in any one of our great art districts, you can see the next generation of art talent making its mark on this city forever. I know that not everyone has experienced the promise of Phoenix that I have, and I want to change that. Every part of our city deserves investments to transform areas that need help. I want to get to work using tools such as opportunity zones, tax credits, infrastructure incentives, and the great ideas that are in this room to build a city that works for everyone. With more investment and good jobs in our city, we have to be proactive to stay ahead of the curve on affordable housing. It's troubling that our community has one of the highest eviction rates. We can do something about it. As a mom, I'm especially passionate about fighting for families, and too many families are experiencing homelessness. We'll have to step it up so our youngest children have the stability at home that can help them succeed. So much of what we have, we owe to those who served in our armed forces, and I want to make Phoenix the choice of veterans. I've learned so much about the unique needs of our veterans from many of you, including Congressman Ruben Gallego, and I look forward to working with him and others to bring Phoenix and Arizona to the next level. I want Phoenix to be the best city for our children, but I also want it to be the best for our seniors. I'm so fortunate that my parents moved from Albuquerque, although I did have to give them a grandchild to get them to do it. <laughs> they remind me of how important it is to do more to help older adults in age in place with community sport, support and transportation options. Quality of life is important at any age. And let me take a point of personal privilege here to let everyone know that I have the best mom and dad. I wouldn't be who I am, and I certainly could not have run for mayor without their help. Thank you, mom and dad. Just as new ideas are taking place throughout the city, we can do that at City Hall too. Let's go beyond our comfort level and try new things. In 2017, Governing Magazine recognized us as the nation's most innovative city. We have smart, capable employees with forward-thinking ideas. I want to thank our city employees for all you do for this city. Our employees give so much to this city. Just this morning, one of our police officers was involved in a serious traffic accident. Our thoughts and prayers are with our officer, his family, and all of our first responders. I want to work with all city employees to take Phoenix to the next level and have the audacity to push new boundaries without the paralyzing fear of failure. If we are going to be the most innovative city in the country, we have to take risks. I hope to be the type of mayor who supports employees doing great things. Phoenix is, by leaps and bounds, a more sustainable city than just a decade ago. But as the impact of climate change accelerates, so too must our work to become more resilient, protect our water, and reduce the urban heat island. It will take innovation to move us forward. I know that innovative thinking will help fight crime too. We're hiring hundreds of new police officers, and those on the beat deserve the backup of support staff and better technology solutions to help keep our streets and our officers safe. Phoenix can lead the way in innovations in public safety. There is so much we can do, and I'm excited for what's next. But I also want to recognize that we are living in a difficult era for our country and the world. There's too much division, too much violence. Just a few days ago, I joined many in our community to honor the victims of the massacre in Christchurch, the latest in a terrible string of tragedies. The campaign, though, has given me hope that Phoenix can be part of the solution. My family came to the United States because my ancestors weren't free to practice their religious beliefs elsewhere. And it means so much that so many of the people who stood with me came from different religious traditions than my own, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, or secular. They cared far more about our shared values, such as cre creating a safe place to call home or making sure our children get a great education, than our differences. I worked with so many inspiring people during this campaign. One of them, Anaik, helped lead the pledge today. <laughs> yeah. 
And Ake is already an accomplished policymaker. He helped the state of Arizona update its curriculum standards to include the Sikh religion, including its roots in India, and that is the world's fifth most common religion. He's six years old. How impressive is that? He and many others give me so much hope. And just as our residents can be part of the solution, I know our city council can too. I'm looking forward to working with each of my colleagues to show that in a time where there is so much dysfunction in governments elsewhere, that ours will shine as an example of a place where things get done. So much of the progress we've achieved in recent years has been through bipartisan support. And we are at our best when we work to bring people together. I know there will be times we will have our differences, and that's OK. Healthy debate is a good thing and can make our ideas better. But let's heed Justice Sandra Day O'Connor's call to bring civility and rational dialogue into our government and our community life. Our constituents and our employees deserve the best from us, and I know we can make them proud. I want you to know that I stand before you today with a heart so full of gratitude. I am grateful that the voters have placed their trust in me and that so many people helped make today possible because they believed in the promise of our future. I am grateful that 15 years ago, I got into a packed car and turned onto the highway never to look back. Phoenix has been good to so many of us, but our city's best days are ahead. With our collective imagination, passion, and ingenuity, our children will tell theirs about what we have accomplished. Let's build a city worthy of our promise. Let's write ne the next chapter together. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gallego. Now, please welcome to the stage for a reading, Arizona Poet Laureate, Alberto Alvaro Rios. Welcome, everybody. Bienvenidos todos. Congratulations again, Mayor Gallego. And also, happy World Poetry Day. <laughs> The selection I'm going to read today is, I think, an expression of the future Mayor Gallego has talked about, the world we're making, and the generations that will live in it. Mayor Gallego's son, Michael, my granddaughter, Ines, Anaik, who led us in the Pledge of Allegiance today, and his younger sibling, who is also here, all our kids. A House Called Tomorrow. You are not 15 or 12 or 17. You are a hundred wild centuries and 15, bringing with you in every breath and in every step everyone who has come before you, all the yous that you have been, the mothers of your mother, the fathers of your father. If someone in your family tree was trouble, a hundred were not. The bad do not win, not finally, no matter how loud they are. We simply would not be here if that were so. You are made fundamentally from the good. With this knowledge, you never march alone. You are the breaking news of the century. You are the good 
who has come forward through it all, even if so many days feel otherwise. But think, when you as a child learned to speak, it's not that you didn't know words. It's that from the centuries, you knew so many. And it's hard to choose the words that will be your own. From those centuries, we human beings bring with us the simple solutions and songs the river bridges and star charts and song harmonies, all in service to a simple idea, that we can make a house called tomorrow. What we bring, finally, into the new day, every day, is ourselves. And that's all we need to start. That's everything we require to keep going. Look back only for as long as you must, then go forward into the history you will make. Be good, then better. Write books, cure disease, make us proud. Make yourself proud. And those who came before you, when you hear thunder, Hear it as their applause. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. And now, please welcome to the stage from the Gila River Indian community, Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis. Skooksiotic. Good morning. Honored guests, elected officials, city council members, our new mayor of the city of Phoenix, Kate Gallego. And, and also, I, I think I, I feel the need as well. Let's also give another round of applause to our law enforcement and our first responders as well. And, and I see so many that I know are, are, who are veterans here. Let's also acknowledge our veterans as well. I am indeed honored to be with you all this morning for the inauguration of Kate Gallego as mayor of this great city. I can feel the excitement in this room and the anticipation for the next chapter in leadership of this city. Let me start by thanking again Mayor-elect, now Mayor Gallego, for allowing me, the leader of a neighboring government, to provide these remarks this morning. Phoenix and the Gila River Indian community have been partners for a long time. As governments and communities, our decisions impact each other. We have each grown significantly over the past few decades. Our populations have grown in numbers, our infrastructure has modernized, and our future progress and opportunities will continue to rely upon each other. So I appreciate the opportunity to share with you my thoughts and interactions with your new mayor and to be a small part of this historic moment in your history. I first met Kate when she was elected to the City Council in 2013. My first impression of her was similar to that of many others. She struck me as a rising star. She was vibrant, intelligent, articulate, and more importantly, she was genuinely interested in government. When I say government, I mean that term in the most fundamental sense of the word. Kate believes in a government that is reflective of the people it represents, that a government is really about a community of individuals that is focused on the well-being, progress, and the general welfare for everyone, not just a few. Kate also understands the effective governments must respect to be effective and collaborate with other governments. 
For example, Kate attended both of my inauguration ceremonies as governor of the Gila River Indian community and spoke at my first inauguration. She took time to learn about my government and my people, to learn about me and my constituents and their needs. This sounds so fundamental, but you would be surprised by how few government officials understand their roles and the importance of respecting other governments and their customs and laws. Kate was able to develop a strong working relationship with the Gila River Indian community because she treated us with respect. She recognized our credibility and tried to understand our issues, not just from the perspective of a leader of Phoenix, but also from my perspective as a leader of a tribal nation. By doing this, she gained our trust and our willingness to see her as a genuine partner. Her hard work, diligence, and attention to detail helped us gain confidence in her ability to understand complex issues and develop innovative solutions that allowed for all parties to feel like they got something out of the deal. She does not dwell on mistakes or the past and keeps an open mind looking towards the future. Her degrees in both environmental studies and business administration show her complex character and desire to understand all aspects of things from all perspectives. She values people who have differing views and tries to understand the issues from your perspective by imagining herself in your position. It is her unique leadership approach that allowed us to have such a successful collaboration with her on water issues and specifically on the critical issue of the drought contingency planning. Instead of viewing my community as a special interest or as a competitor, Kate viewed us as true partners. She quickly understood that we as indigenous people, the first peoples of this land, care greatly about the future of our great state. Truly, our guest, yes. <laughs> Truly, our destinies are interconnected, and Kate engaged us in a productive dialogue to develop solutions that benefit us all. So I'm honored to be here today to congratulate the citizens of Phoenix for electing a dynamic mayor who is not intimidated by the obstacles that lie ahead, but is optimistic and motivated to work hard in an inclusive manner to develop solutions that provide opportunities for everyone. And congratulations again to Mayor Gallego. The Gila River Indian community looks forward to working with you, and we wish you all the best in your new role to you, your beautiful son Michael, and your family. Masapa, thank you so much. Thank you, Governor Lewis. Now it is my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome to the stage for the finale performance, the Brag About It Performance Troupe. Walk into a plane, but they was getting tossed. I smell my name. 
Much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one last song for you, and it's just a simple mantra to help you all remember on such a great day as this. It's always important to remember, no matter what we do in our lives, and our careers, history has its eyes on you. History has its eyes on you. History, history, history. I was given my first command I led my men into a massacre I witnessed their deaths firsthand Oh, I made every mistake And felt the shame rise in me And even now I lie awake Knowing history, history, history Has its eyes on me History, history, history Remember from here on in